We're here, we're here, we're big, we're bad, we're back. Can you see me? I'm whistling. Hey! All right. God, it's always a... a I love, we love the YouTube. We do love the YouTube. But it, every single time we start this up, it's like a few minutes to figure it out. Hello, Devon Underwood. Hello, Brian. Hello, Sheila. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Aaron. Hello, Michael. Hello, Justin. Hello, Tom. Hello, Martin. G Baxter. G, G Baxter, what is your first name? Am I loud enough, by the way? Can you hear me okay? Uh, not hardly. Jay, how are you, Darko? Tim, Ken. Tim, uh, another Tim. Fantastic. It's my brother's name, by the way. John. Uh, oh, Sean says, please like and share. That would be great. Paul. Uh, Mercy, driver Excel. Um, hello. Um, what do we got there? Hello. Hello, Mike. Hello, Jason. I'm going to show off Paul. I'm in love with this guitar. Did you remember my beaten up old silver tone? This has been rebuilt by Scott Baxendale. We're actually going to put up a video. Uh, where does it go up? Tomorrow? Oh, it's going up Thursday because I'm on a plane on Thursday morning. So I won't be doing the live stream this Thursday. Anyway, I love this. So good. This is so... He completely rebuilt it. It was destroyed by Delta Airlines. And they smashed it to pieces. And he rebuilt it. It's just so gorgeous. Hello, Ashley. Hello, Farm Dog. Greg Farmer. Don't take the guitar. Lisa. Um, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one the airline destroyed. Uh, please change the strings. They're brand new strings, me. Brand spanking new tr strings. So I'm not sure what you hear. Are we going to start off like that? The superior. <laughs> anyway, so. Um, hey, Ron, how are you? Claudius, hello. Earl, how are you? Hello, Panacea Studios. Steve. I'm fantastic, Steve. I hope you're well as well. Eric, great to see you here. Thank you, Eves. Hello, Milton. Simon. Paul, it is gorgeous. I mean, Scott's a freaking genius. So watch out for the video on Thursday. Basically, what he does is he can put whole brand new bracing in it. Um, leaving on a jet plane. Did Delta compensate? Oh, no, not at all. Not even in the slightest. Um, it is what it is. I mean, when I say they destroyed it, I'm talking about in 1990, blah, 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 blah. And what I did is we taped it together with uh, Delta tape. So, you know, the, the, the tape when you tape up your luggage and stuff like that. So the whole guitar was held together, the body, because it was smashed all through here. It was smashed. It was all taped together with Delta tape. So, and, and it, it uh, built Beatles licks. What do you want? How about this? There's, there's some Beatles licks for your day. Uh, well, we started some on time. It was uh, old Blackbird. I put it down. Um, so, um, so what I've learned so far, says Martin, is never throw away uh, an instrument. True, exactly. Especially when you've got a guy like Scott Baxendale. So his company's called Harmony. Uh, I just got to talk about him because you, you don't understand how amazing this is. So his company, this is Baxendale Guitars. 
Um, his company is called Harmony and uh, Conversions or Harmony and Silver Term. But look him up, Baxendale. He's quite good on Instagram. He's got a nice little Instagram page there. Um, and I have two of his guitars now, plus we've got the baritone. We, um, we've got lots of great guitars of his. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's very inspiring. It's really great to have such talented people. Um, David's later than me today. Yes. Uh, and uh, Eric's gone to get me a cup of tea. All right. So what are we going to do today? Well, firstly, we're going to have some fun. Got to play some guitar. Um, you know me, I'll have a guitar on my lap the whole time. I had a wonderful day yesterday. I got to spend it with Mr. Tim Pierce and we cut guitars on four songs, um, for a young artist called Luke Underhill. Um, we didn't film it. We just concentrated on working. Sometimes like, you know, um, we can film in the background and, and do stuff, but we didn't in this instance because we had a lot to do, not in a short space of time, but we really wanted to be focused. And Luke's record is going to be absolutely beautiful. Hopefully in a few months, we'll be breaking down maybe one of Luke's songs if he's comfortable doing that as well. But what we're going to do today, and I'm actually just quickly scrolling for these multi-tracks. I can't remember. I think, I think Tim played on this. This is a very, very simple song. Um, oh no, it's Greg Saran and the bass player, I'm trying to remember who the bass player was. I think it was Dan Rothschild or was it, I'm completely blanking. It was either Dan Rothschild, it might've been John Button. Um, but anyway, let me go to that screen and yes, I do need a shave. Okay. I'm up here. Hey, so why am I playing this one? Well, if you're an Academy member, you'll know that we've worked, we've done some stuff with this artist before. His name is Andy Palmer. And why I love this particular track is it's a performance. It is a live performance. Oh no, Tim did play guitar on this well. So, so Greg Saran is doing the, the main electric. So off the floor on this track is live drums, bass, live bass, um, Andy, the singer playing acoustic guitar, um, which is doubled later, but, or is that the same one with a delay on it? I may have done that. I may have done that trick. In which case it's going to get muted. Um, and then, uh, with Greg playing electric guitar, um, and, uh, we had a guitar going through the Leslie as well, which was a lot of fun. And then Tim played the solo. Um, and uh, live piano. by Mr. Zach Ray. Check out Zach Ray's resume. It's Z-A-C or Z-A-C-R-A-E. I'm going to write it on here. Check him out. Check him out. He's fantastic. So this is the, you know, some this this is purely is world-class musicians, some of the best musicians in the world. Andy's vocal is phenomenal. Um, so why am I doing this? Well, obviously, it's live off the floor. It's a really inspirational song. It's all performances by great musicians. It's recorded in one room at the same time. But, what you know, obviously, we did the vocal later. We sung, like, you know, a bunch of takes and did a comp. But why do I, why do I love it? I love it because it was recorded on tape. It was actually recorded on that tape machine over there. So we recorded the whole thing on tape and then dumped it into Pro Tools, which is why you can see all the edits, look at this, are all done at the same time because they're all taken from a tape machine. It was recorded on tape. Um, yeah, it is a, it is a whirly. Um, so anyway, yeah. So this is done on tape. Now, you'll see, quote unquote, some samples, right? But they're not samples. They are, but they're not. What they are is they are the actual kick drum and the actual snare recorded and then flown against itself. So what I would do is at the end of it, I would get a single hit like this. So that's the same snare. As you can see relatively easily, I'll make it look. It's, it's the same snare. So it allows us much better phase, and it's just a trick of, like, giving us a bit more body, but it's not using, um, you know, it's not using, like, a generic snare sample. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to listen, and at the moment it's going to be quiet, it's going to be nothing's panned, so you're just going to see me presented this song as though I just heard it for the first time. Um, it's a whirly, I think. Okay. 
Listen to that. That reverber. Can you hear? I love it. So a couple of things. I printed a snare reverb live. So this is a live printed snare reverb. See here? It's a trick that a lot of people have done over the years. So it's printed live off of the live snare. I don't for life remember what reverb I had in my room. It was probably something super cheap. It was probably a quadroverb or something like that. But if I mute that, you can still hear the ambience of the room. Have a listen. You hear the vocal in those mics? Here's the close room mics. Let's see what we can hear in it. So that's all in the live mics. It's pretty awesome. Now, those close mics were behind the drum kit reflecting off the wall, but the wall was carpeted. It was, a, it was my old studio, and that's what we did. We had it carpeted, believe it or not, on the lower side of the rooms. Um, it was anything just to try and kill some of the reverberation. This was like something we just built. Now, here's the far rooms. These far rooms are a pair of 57s up against the wall. Have a listen to this. I love these mics. So you can hear all the bleed in the room. You know, it's pretty spectacular. You can hear everything bleeding in the room. It's totally performed. Now, a couple of things I want to talk about. This is my favorite mic. Now, what I do is I will, I will put a cymbal down on the ground in front of the drum kit. Um, and it's, it's a cymbal mic. And then I mic the cymbal. Have a listen to this. Yeah, reflecting, getting the reflector sound of a symbol. How good is that? That's a fantastic. That was pretty close. So imagine you've got like, um, imagine you've got the snare here, the kick here, the drummer sitting here. It's like in the gap, like below the hi hat. It's just squeezed in as tight as I can. I mean, you can basically. Use that mic on its own. That's one microphone, one mic. So that could be my drum sound. Oh yeah, and what's happening is the drummer is holding a shaker while he's playing. So you can hear a shaker in that mix. Have a listen. Pretty amazing. Now, have a listen to the overheads. Because he's holding it in his hand like this. And I'm going to put a little uh, compression on that so you can hear it. She's a good old fashioned. Listen to that tape hiss. The overheads were a pair of 414s. It's actual tape. So I didn't use tape saturation. It is recorded on tape. So I just recorded to tape. Simple as that. Um, so 
See what else you can hear. Can you hear those those bells? That's a tambourine. So the tambourine's on the snare. So there's this, there is a tambourine laying on the snare. There's a shaker in his hand as he's playing. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Um, just really, really great drumming. Um, and then, you know, these samples are basically the actual kick and snare themselves. Here's the snare. You hear the rivets in the uh, cymbal there? The song is called uh, Colfax and the artist is Andy Palmer. It was recorded on two inch tape on my Studer and then dumped into Pro Tools. So all we've done so far is put a compressor on the overheads to turn them up. That is it. <laughs> if I put that little uh, printed reverb back on the snare, you're gonna get this. This is nothing. This is just as it's recorded. Have a listen. Now, that was my old API. I had a 20-channel uh, API. That was, it was that and a combination of some BAE mic pre's. I had 12 channels that worked inside of the API, and then the rest of it was BAE um, 1073s and actually had um, the um, 1072s. Remember the 72s, the, the line amps that were changed into it? So, yeah. It's, there's something to be said for recording something well. I mean, that really is what you're hearing. I think when we transferred this, it was at 48K. I mean, that was basically what we were working at in those days. Um, okay, here's the stand-up bass. I love the fact you can hear his foot tapping. Listen to his foot.
go back where wings had been. No one will mess with us now. Sooner or later, you best choose which side you're on. Yeah, a lot of people say Tom Waits, and I always respond by, he actually is African-American, he's not pretending to be. Bada boom, bada bing! Okay, so um, here is uh, Tim's guitar solo. Whatever you're into, just carry on, no one will mess with you now. I love it. So why are we listening to so much of it? Well, I'm happy to listen to a lot of it because it's a lot of fun. Um, but we're listening to so much of it because this is what you need to do with a track like this. Somebody hands you this to mix. What is your next decision? It's like there's so much low end. I mean, these are the raw tracks. You can tell this is going through a real console um, and it's hitting tape because listen to the amount of low end. I mean, it's what you're hearing is definitely um, tape. You're hearing tape. You're hearing, well, let's be honest. You're hearing number one, you're hearing performances. You're hearing real, really talented musicians playing with each other in a room. Yes, there's a couple of overdubs, but 90% of this is just musicians in a room. So you're hearing that number one, which is fantastic. Um, thank you ever so much, Mark. I really appreciate it. Mark just bought us um, bought us a sandwich for lunch. Thank you. Well, I'm drinking my PG tips, and I'm looking forward to my sandwich. Thank you, Mark. Um, so what you're hearing is you're hearing really, really great performances um, on a tape machine, you know, and that's great. Look, I'm, you know me. I'm not Mr. Like, a house to be tape. It's just I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to do something different, and I wanted to talk about, like, how things actually affect stuff. This, there's very little going on here except for the live performances and the real performers. So that is really important. So all that being said, let us listen to, um, let's listen to the drums. Let's go here. I'm going to flatten everything back out. Bring it all back down. Okay. And we're just going to listen down. So here's the drums. Yeah, you could leave it alone. But you heard it. So what What am I, uh, you know, what, what do we like about this? 
you know, what do we love about this? What we love about this is, to be honest, is it's big and it's fat. It's got so much low end. If I listen to the kick in, this is going to be the most EQ'd part of the kick, but have a listen. Even with that heavy EQ on it, it's still absolutely fat. So what do we want to do? Do we want to get in there and sculpt it? Not really. We want to control it. We want to, like, you know, tease it. This isn't going to be a track where we're going to go in there and go absolutely nuts. So don't get me wrong. We may go in there and use a bit of transient designer and shorten some of this. Let's have a listen to the kick out. Phase is pretty good. So together. So now there's this is the live kick a sample of it. And it's adding just a little tiny bit of snap. Put the three elements together. I mean, I already like just that blend. So we're going to move as quickly as we can, given, you know, time constraints to mix this song. Also, hey, Eric, are you having a cup of tea as well? I'm having coffee. Coffee. Oh, we haven't we haven't turned you into a PG Tips guy yet, a coffee drinker. He's still American. He's not going to he's not going to give up on his uh, on his Yankee doodleness. Uh, OK, so keeping it mono. So kick kick sub. And I'm just going to do some really, really, really uh, quick stuff. Okay, yeah. Um, well, we're going to give away. What should we give away, Matt? Is Matt watching? We're going to do giveaways. Of course we are. Uh, do, 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 do. So I'm going to tease it. I'm going to just tease a little bit. And... We like to move quickly. Obviously, I'm talking, so it's going to be twice as slow as if I was just thinking about this. But what would I do? I would probably do a little bit of more sculpting on the EQ. I'm just deciding whether I want to, um, where I want to kind of like tweak it. But let's just say, let's just pull out a little bit of 350 before we do anything else. Listen to it without the EQ on. It's kind of nice both ways. So I'm going to relax it a little bit. So it's relaxed just a little bit. I do like that low end from that kick out. Yeah, you can cut the 250. I'm going to 350 and doing a wide cut. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Matt's saying yearly memberships to give away. Um, oh, by the way, we're um, Matt's reminding me via text. Look. He's texting me real time, real time. He's texting me. Hey, remind them that we're uh, we're upgrading the academy. Woohoo! So basically, it's faster. One of the things is, is we, you know, the academy's a little over two years old now, and it's got uh, a lot of members, a couple of thousand members, which is fantastic. However, um, two years in the wonderful world of computers may as well be two thousand years. You know how things move, so. <laughs> Um, we're, what we're doing now is we just, he basically has upgraded it and it's going to run super fast. So thank you. All right. And easier to use. Yeah. I mean, basically two, uh, 250 to 450 is the ugly 
area. So if you go in the middle about 350 and pull it out, you get what you want. If if we were going to get super sculpturing on this and this was metal, then I might get in there and do some super detail, but I'm not trying to do this. I'm trying This was this was mixed originally on a Neve. Let me play you the original mix. Okay, here's the original mix which I mixed on a Neve. Have a listen to this. Don't see Max Clint because he's in Canada. He's a Canadian. <laughs> now I like that mix. That was done on a knee for my old 8058, which part of me regrets selling. Wouldn't anybody? I still have that beautiful Cadac, and we have the BCM10 and a SSL. So trust me, I have tons of nice toys to play with, but there was something special about that. That's actually, I believe, in the Bunker Studios now in Brooklyn and making great records. It's good to see it go to a great home. So those of you that know the Bunker in Brooklyn, um, that's where the 8058 is, and they make great records there. Very similar records to this. They do a lot of like lovely stuff like that. However, I listened to that last night um, when we were choosing what songs to do today. And I wanted to do, like we do, something special, a different kind of song that was recorded in a different way and think in a different way. Because what we're trying to do is get away from that sort of YouTube tutorial mentality where you go, how do I mix a kick drum? And then you go and you watch uh, a really beautiful polished video on how to mix a kick drum. And the problem is, is it doesn't teach you anything because you have to listen to the song. And what we're doing here is quite different to what we normally do. We're doing like super, you know, super wide EQs. We're listening. But I want to preserve a little bit more of the oomph in the recording. I feel like when I listen to the Neve recording mix, I was like, yeah, that's cool. It's too pop. It's too polish. It doesn't sound as raw as the track. So the funny thing is, is I'm going from comparing to a Neve mix on an 8058, one of the greatest consoles ever made. And now I'm going to try and beat that mix in the box. So yeah, in the box, beating a Neve 8058 mix. I think that's pretty awesome. Okay, have a listen. I'm not going to do anything else at the moment. I think I might get a little bit of definition about 2, 3K. Hey, Eric, will you tell Justin where the uh, new song is? 
the Steve McGora one. I'm actually not going to do much more to it for the time being. What's interesting is like you see how even those hits are. That's the way it's hitting the tape, but look how even it is. Look how even that is. There's a combination. First of all, the API mic pre's are pretty crunchy, hitting tape pretty hard, and the hits are super, super even. Obviously combined with the fact that we're talking a world-class drummer. I, I can't remember if this was Blair or Victor and Drizzo. I'm sorry, I don't remember. I can't remember if it was Victor and Drizzo or Blair Sinter. Sorry if either of you are watching. Yeah, you'll be able to watch the video again afterwards. Okay, so now let's go to the snare top. So I'm going to just create a little buzz for that. We're doing the least amount of work we can do on this. We're keeping this pretty minimal for the, pretty minimal for the time being um, because we're building up a whole picture. You heard the whole song of everything playing together and it sounded pretty darn good. So we're just doing a little bit of focusing. We're focusing in. We just brought out a little bit more low end in the kick, brought out a little bit of low mids and pushed a little bit of definition. We're doing subtle things, subtle, subtle things. Don't want to go absolutely crazy at the moment. Okay, so now we got those two combined. Just go for that only. Now the first thing we can do is just crank up the sends a little bit going into that bus. I love how pervasive that that um, that shaker is that you can hear in everything. He's playing super, super low. He's like, he's like just tucking at. But I want to, I'm not going to be afraid to annihilate this a little bit because we, ha we have a blessing of having this snare, the actual snare itself being sampled. So this was him playing, um, you know, after, after the end of the take, I said, you know, just hit that snare. And we took a couple of samples of it. So it's the snare again. So what we got there is a little bit more nose without the bleed of the kick in it. Hello in Dublin. Beautiful part of the world. Oh, the tambourines in there screaming as well. But the, what I'm saying is like the tambourines on the snare. It's actually laying on top of the snare. So I'm not surprised that I can hear that. But what's incredible is that you can hear the shaker, which is in his hand up here. Now, the one thing is, is like, it's got a lot of low end in it. Everything has got some low end in it. There's not a lot of att attack on that kick. So, you know, while we're here, I'm just going to eh, crank that a little bit. Oh, I did the tape transfer... Um, like after recording, I did the original tape transfer. It was always going to be mixed on Pro Tools because the API was in one room and the Neve was in the other. So after I finished tracking, I transferred it to Pro Tools and then went in the other room and mixed it. So it was always going on to Pro Tools to do the mix. Okay, so what I like about this is I can have a little bit of fun with it because we have the actual snare itself as a sample. We can do some fun stuff. So what, what we can do is uh, compress this element of the snare independently.
Love it. Already just sounding great. Again, I'm trying not to do too much. I'm trying just to do some stuff. So I'm going to use, you'll notice I'm going to use a lot of filter bank here. They're not sponsoring this or anything. Um, but the reason why is because I've always leaned on them for sort of more analog-y kind of feel. So I'm going to go, um, there's a little high passing going on. That's fine. Okay, I'm going to go at about 100-ish ish, and boost some. It's like the, the the high end. That's like the um, it's like the tambourine control. Look, I just cranked like six dBs worth of uh, nice wide slope at like four k. Tambourine comes up. I really do love what the Mac DSP does for that kind of world. It's really simplistic. Does the job, and we've got it on the overheads already. It's not clipping, Ronnie. That's just an in that's just a level indication. Tell me where you're hearing the clip. You've got to stop using your eyes. It's really, really important not to get obsessed with with this kind of stuff. It's like this is a this is an indication where something's going to clip. But okay, first of all, tell me where you hear it. It's not clipping. It first, and it's thirty two bit floating. This is. I think this is a problem with the misinformation because the blessing that I have of coming up working on tape and then switching over to digital is we didn't get to see. We didn't get to see things. We only got to hear them. And yeah, it's definitely, um, I'll bring up at this point, I'll bring this up for you just a little bit too much. How's this? Yeah, that shaker is so pervasive. <laughs> Cool. I'm digging this. Now I'm just, here's the snare verb. I'm going to throw it in just as it is. Now I'm going to go through this, this cymbal mic and turn it down and bring it up because it's a game changer. So, I, But I don't want to kill it. I don't want to make the only drum sound be it because if I am, I might as well just use this on its own. I'm fine with the noise. I'm fine with hearing the tape noise. That's just the way it is. But what's so funny is we had a guy, he still works for us. Great, great guy. Yes, it is giveaway time. Um, we had a great guy and he still works for us. He does uh, a lot of work. Um, he's really great. And I'm not going to say his name because it would embarrass him. But I asked him to recall this mix on the SSL because I wanted to do a mix, not of this song, of a different song from Andy's. And uh, so he starts recalling it from the Pro Tools session. 
and I um I can't remember what I was doing. I was on a conference call or something, and I came back. I was like, "Hey, how's it going?" He goes, "He goes, Warren, Warren, I think we have a problem." Um, and I said, "I was like, what do you mean?" He goes, "There's a problem," and I was like, "What is it?" And he goes, "Listen to this," and he started the music like a bar or two before, and of course it was. And he's like, listen to all that hissing sound. <laughs> and I was like, that's called tape. <laughs> he'd never he'd never heard tape hiss before. I mean, he's 20, maybe he's 27, 28 now. He'd never heard tape hiss before. That's just the way it is. I mean, look, if I, uh, if I pull... I'll pull this out here. I mean, that's electronics and hey, the TIS isn't too bad there, but when you get like 24 tracks of it all going together, it really does mess with people's minds. They're not used to it. It wasn't Eric. Okay, so let's do a year's membership to the Academy. Um, so this is a good one. And then on the last one, we'll do a Skype call. Who won the Skype call last time? I don't think we've set it up yet. Let's set, make sure we set it up. I am going to be getting on a jet plane. Leaving on a jet plane. Eric and I are going to go and fly to the other side of the country to film uh, a really, really important part of our, our industry. Um, we, we're we really going to spend a lot of this year um, bringing knowledge from all over the world um, because I feel like it's 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 not just a Los Angeles based and we we don't just sit in a nice you know a nice air conditioning thing and have people come to us and kiss the glove you know <laughs> it's up more for us is like you know this is about getting out there and helping people and so we're gonna out, out of our own funds not sponsored by anybody get on a plane and go and interview a couple of really really important people so not um a Skype call, what will we discuss? I don't know. Uh, hairdressing? All right. So hair, my hair seems to be a conversation with lots of people. Um, anyway, so um, I just want to know, yes or no question. And so the answer, if it's no, is fine. And you can win by saying no. You could say no, I would like to. Yes, you could say yes, I did. And then you could say what you used. So what's the question? The question is, have you ever recorded a song on tape? Have you ever recorded a song on tape? And if you, um, oh, nobody needs to kiss my ring. I have one. It's my marriage ring. That's it. I don't need another one. Um, the um, so what was I saying? So the um, ba -ba 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 -ba. so have you ever recorded on tape? No, Clifford. This is the question. And if you have, what was the studio? If you can't remember the name of the tape machine, that's fine. If you can, that would be great. Um, smell the glove. Yeah. Um, so have you recorded? And if you have, I'd love to know where, um, and if you haven't, but you'd like to, uh, there you go. Sean says no, but want to, um, cassette, you know, what? cassette tape counts. I don't, that's good. Actually. Did you record on, uh, um, just let me know if you have, and everybody has, if you answer, you get entered. Yes or no is sufficient. Okay. So I'm going to put in the hat. I don't know if there's much hat. The hat is basically for, here you go. All right, let's put in the rooms. See, I'm really digging it. I think I think I'm happy with this whole approach. I've just got to decide: do we want that kick and that snare just to like stick its head out just a little tiny bit more? You know what I mean? That's why I'm glad we've got it separated like we do. Um, you know that we've got their own buses. I'm just gonna like ink up the the kick and the snare a little bit.
<laughs> does a Fisher Price child's tape recorder count? I think if it's tape, then it does. Okay, so pretty pretty nice. Okay, so uh, I am going to have some fun with this quickly, um, and I'm going to make that decision before moving on, just because what the heck I'm going to. So I'm going to create a bus, three and four, for all of the drums to go to. So obviously, initially, we're going to take um, that. I am going to do a little bit of low mid cut out of the rooms and a bit of just for the heck of it. And I'm just going to go to an REQ um, just for something that's a little transparent. I honestly, so many professionals still use REQs um, and Waves plugins for this stuff. We're used to them. We know what they sound like. They've been around forever, but they just do the job. And so I just did a little low mid cut, little low end cut. Just it will help focus the low end from the real kick. Okay, um, and I'm probably going to just copy that over to the overheads. There you go. All right. So now I'm going to take all of these outputs here and make them go to three and four as well. So now three and four is now my drum bus. So I've got a stereo auxiliary drum bus, and we'll call this drum bus. Do, 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 do. Here it is, and let's have a listen. Well, somebody said it's transferring off tape right now to Pro Tools at Supple Studios. Great job, Troy. You rock. As soon as we finish this, we're mixing uh, some Rick Springfield, which you have to wait for is going to be phenomenal. Absolutely unbelievable. That guy is so talented. It's insane. So I'm going to bring the top end down boost that I did on the snare a little bit. It's bringing me too much hi-hat. So as Sean is saying, please like and share. Um, Greg Pager. Da, 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 da. Uh, okay, Greg Pager, great guitar player, just said hi. Uh, real time, stuff is happening. Yep, so Matt wants to make sure that you know that the, the new academy is going to be freaking awesome. And, uh, um, do, 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 do. Um, so. I think, Sheila, I think Anita's just started her second year in the academy. He's really talented. Um, he's ridiculously talented. You know, in the, in the 60s, as a teenager, he was, um, he was huge as a musician in the 60s in Australia, where he's from. He was always a musician, and then, of course, he, he became a successful actor. But he already had, like, 15 years' worth of albums out. I didn't realize until I worked with him that he's had six platinum albums in America, gold and platinum records. Pretty amazing. Okay, so um, I'm trying to find the YouTube video so I can see how we're doing. So please hit that like button. I see we have 400 people watching. That's amazing. Do we have 400 likes yet? No, we have 167. So please hit that like button. That would be absolutely outstanding. So we left the boost on the low end on the kick. We're actually going to focus the... Um, high pass a little bit on that um just because we were using that boost um to exaggerate the tambourine a bit and yes you're right he's one of the greatest people as well he's very you, you know when i th there's a certain there's a beauty with working with uh with with artists with great pedigrees because when they give you mixed notes they're very focused and they make sense People ask me a lot about how do you deal with artists that don't do that. I mean, it's just an inevitability that when you're younger and you're trying to figure things out, you're going to make you're going to make your mix engineer jump through hoops while you try to figure out what you want it to sound like. But obviously, the more experienced um, uh, the more experienced guys don't do that. So I'm going to reluctantly do a little bit of low boost on my kick on my bus. And then I'm going to 
do some high boost over the top. Now I'm going to throw in the stand-up bass. Which is nice, but it needs some control. You can tell it's, just listen to that, it sort of comes in and out, in and out. All right, I just wanted to listen a little bit. This is important when mixing, listening. <laughs> so I haven't done much to the drum bus. Um, I'm actually going to duplicate the drum bus. Um, and the reason I'm going to duplicate it is because, of course, I'm going to do some fun stuff to it. So I'm going to call the other drum bus uh, parallel. Whoops, if I could spell. Okay, so... Um, so I'm going to do a parallel bus, but the first thing I'm going to do, and somebody suggested this, and I, th I think I'm going to go with it. Um, I'm going to go, and I'm going to grab the 670, the the IK1. Now, the thing I like about, yeah, I'll probably use the MV2 on the bass. The thing I like about the IK stuff is it's a little bit more modern in certain situations. It seems like the top end's a little bit more detailed. We noticed that in the 1176 the other day. We chose a different 1176 based on the fact that it had some high-end boost. It had some clarity up there, had some more grit. So I'm going to use this and see what happens. So we're going all the way to the left to the fastest release time. I haven't tried a cow uh, strip. I'd love to. We are doing more production courses. I don't like what it's doing to the kick. Um, I like it a lot, and I think it'd be good for maybe squashing, but I don't like what it's doing to the kick. I mean, I, lo I love this. I love this uh, compressor, but it's not. It's not good for this particular one. It's. Um, I would have to side chain it. I think, to be honest, that would be what we could do. Like, if you want to, we want to get clever on it. What we could do is this. Why don't we try it just for schnitz and schniggles? So we can take the um, we can take a send. Um, we'll call it. Do, 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 do. Let's have a look. Do, do. You know what? I'm not. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I think it would take too long. But one thing we could do is create a, create a submix without the kick and use that on the compressor. I think that would be nice as a side chain, but we won't do it. So what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to go in and grab the good old favorite and see what happens. The generic 670, this one, which at one time came free with Pro Tools. Yes, please like and share, everybody. That would be absolutely amazing. Thank you, Sean, for reminding me. Um, so hit that uh, 400 people, 230. If you can get the likes up, that'd be amazing. So this is the good old fashioned at one time came free with Pro Tools. So 
So it's killing the low end again because the low end is really all that's hitting it there. So um, I, I could spend a bit of time. We could take an input and we could do everything except for the kick drum and let the kick drum bleed. Or else we could keep looking. So why don't we just keep looking and see what else we've got? This is what's fun because we don't have to do a lot. We're not trying to do a lot. So let's find the right, right thing for the job. Let's go to the V comp and see what options they've got there. Um, bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 mm, I like the V comp, but I don't think we'll use it this time. What about the M presser? Because there's an EQ gain and frequency. Hmm. It might be a little too much fancy for what we need. Uh, 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 um, um, I love having choice, and this is fun for us to do this. So bear with me while we sort of think about what's the best thing. Um, I mean, I know what I want. I know what I'm looking for. And it might be this, if this is do, do, do. Oh, spinning wheel of wheelness. We're not in parallel yet. This is just the main one. Uh, 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 um. Oh, the side chain's not on on this as well. This is fun. Fun for me, at least. You're probably all sitting there going, hurry up, Warren. Come on, Warren. Choose something, Warren. Come on, Warren. What's going on, Warren? Why aren't you choosing something? Because there's too much choice. No, I'm just joking. I'm looking for something uh, 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 uh. Oh, I, lo I love some of these things here see the t-rex could be rather nice as well but this is a i'd rather spend five minutes choosing something really really sweet that doesn't do much but does it really really well over over just kind of because the point is is like i know what i want to control so you know what I know what I want to control. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to go back. We're going to have some fun because I know what I like the sound of. And so why don't I just do what I want to do? This is what's great about doing this in real time. You just get to see my, my whole crazy decision-making process. This isn't prepared and heavily edited to make me look like I'm a genius. I'm just like the rest of us. We're, we're creating music and we're trying, the, we're trying the best thing we possibly can. Okay, so here's the 670. Okay, I'm going to key this. Uh, uh, uh. We'll just take it mono, and I'm going to key this. I don't want three. I'm going to key this from the snare. Uh, 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 uh. I'm going to key this from the snare, and I'm going to key this... Also, from the overheads, a little bit, believe it or not. I'm just going to set this to zero, like so. All right, let's have a listen. I really like that. It's actually better than I thought it was going to be. Okay, now I'm, pro I'm going to copy this 670 down, but I'm not going to key it from the overheads anymore. Now what it's going to be is just the full drum kit. So now listen.
Okay, let's bring it down super low. Yeah, I mean, I can organize it in all kinds of different ways. But anyway, um, as far as the plugins and stuff like that. So I just dem demolished that a little bit. Now... Cool. I'm digging that. I love all the bleed. I love the noise. I love everything. It's a completely live recorded on tape. So um, I'm actually going to do a little mix stuff because so what I would do and I'm going to do the same thing is I'm going to duplicate the bass and I'm going to treat and I'm now going to um, bust that bass together. Uh, uh, um, let's take seven. So create a mono bass. I call that bass sub you could call it bass bass you could call it bass make it solo safe like this um you could call it whatever you like um some people call them auxiliaries you name it okay so what why am i doing this well i'm going to take one element of the bass i'm going to grab an req because it's quick and easy to use i'm going to go to about 200 ish you see me do this a thousand times and listen See that note gets a little carried away there. So I'm actually going to go in and grab a C4. And solo up to about 250. That's all we need. So you already controlled it. Just, just, you saw it do that. I'll bring the threshold down a little bit so it's a bit more aggressive. Even more. I'm very tempted to double it. Here's the second one. Cool. Okay. So uh, I don't need to crank it quite so much. But anyway, so that is... Now, I've, I've not been afraid. I put two C4s on it. It's just, just what you do, man. Okay, so now I'm going to take the other REQ... You see, I, I, I'd watch a forum post with somebody saying, can I do it? It's like, it's too late. I already did it. You know what I mean? It's like, what? If you need to use two multibands together to control that low end and make it sound, just do it. Yeah, we did it. Now we're using the other one, the duplicate here for the articulation. Listen to all that bleed from the other players in the room. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my IK1176 because we like that for the high end and the articulation. So let's just grab that quickly. Now you can really hear his uh, feet tapping. Now, because they're coming from the same source, I can now blend the two, and there's so much better. It is so much better with the uh, control. Okay, love it. Okay, now I'm going to grab some old favorites. Firstly, what I'm going to do is just do some EQ before I do any boosting. So 
We'll come in at about 60-ish, 50-ish, out of the way of the kick drum, and just high pass. Why are we doing that? Because I'm going to use the R bass, which I absolutely love for low end. We know it does a wonderful, wonderful job. Um, but if I'm not going to shape it going in, I'm going to boost 20 to 40 hertz. I don't need that. Miking an upright, don't put it on the F-hole. If you put it on the F-hole, you'll get all the really bad wolf tones. Um, but you do want to get a bit of body. So I tend to mic it closer to the where the, the player's hand is. Thank you. Um, Clay, explain my goal and process on the drum thing. Was to articulate and bring out the kick drum and the snare enough without affecting the overall drum sound. So what happened was I, I articulated the kick and snare a little bit. I pushed them up a little bit in the mix. I made them just poke their head out. Then the parallel bus compression brought back some of the energy that had been reduced by the kick and snare being pushed out. And I got the best of both worlds. So I got more energy from the drums, but more articulation from the kick and snare. Okay, so now what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to put an MV2 the good old favorite after all of that. So, which will just clamp it down just enough. I'm not going to go as crazy as I would in a good old fashioned rock and roll mix, but I'm going to go just enough. I want to, I'm going to use an L2 on my drums just to control it. Watch this. See this slider? I'm going to find that buzzier of the mic, buzzy part of the mic, and see where it is. We're going to ignore it for the time being, because what the heck? We're going to make some great music here. But I definitely want to find out who's the worst offender in the buzz world. So let's have a listen to these. Feels like there's some random phase. Crazy. Yeah, that's a Leslie Cab. We mic'd up a Leslie Cab.
So you can definitely hear that tambourine on that snare. So the question is, is like, is it too much? You know, I'm on the fence. I mean, I like it, but it might get old after a while. So let's have a listen. <laughs> So what I did is I went a little bit more on the on the snare bottom. Now, I also printed quite a few other kind of variations. Like I have a snare, a wood snare that I used, um, which actually is um, recorded at um, the Boneyard. For those of you that know what that is, that's uh, the Boneyard is uh, Joe Perry's studio. So this is one of this is one of Joey Kramer's snares. <laughs> volume automated so let's turn that volume automation off <laughs> I mean, I'm really digging it. Really, really am. I mean, that's really simplistic. I mean, the the low end's still there. It's bringing up the articulation. Um, and really, in the great scheme of things, what have we done? I don't know. 10, 15 plugins. If that, one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 plugins. So, and it's getting there. Now, obviously, it's got a lot to do with the fact that it's a really, really um, fantastic performers and performances. Um, but, you know, um, the song, Niklaus, is called Colfax. The artist is Andy Palmer. If you haven't already, please hit that like button. We're going to do another giveaway. In fact, we're going to do two more giveaways. This first giveaway, um, and we're running late, as usual. Um, but I'm going to try and finish the song up. So we have 400 people watching. We're going to do a giveaway for a free year's membership to the Academy. It's a free year membership. There's about 30, maybe 40 multi-tracks now and lessons, and it's just growing super rapidly. So thank you, everybody. So free membership to the Academy. By the way, did you all watch yesterday's video with Bradley Cook? Please, after this, go back and leave me a nice message on that. I, I believe Bradley is one of the most humble, underrated, best engineers ever. He works very closely with Eric Valentine. I'm a huge fan of his. I'm a huge fan of both of their methodology. He was the engineer on the color and the shape, which is an absolute masterpiece of a record. So go back, please, 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 all of you, please, 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 pretty please, and watch Bradley Cook's one. So we're going to do uh, a year's membership to the Academy. So um, what's the question you want to know? We talked about tape. We Whether any of you had ever recorded on tape, and that included cassette tapes, that included you name it. What about this? Have you ever, 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 ever recorded a band live in a room? Or been in a band that's recorded live in a room like this was? Or have you always done overdubs? A little bit of explanation would be fantastic. Have you ever recorded live in a room? Oh, he's a great guy. And we're doing more videos with him, Peter. More videos will be coming up. He's a really, really great guy. We're going to do some Academy stuff with him as well. So I'm warming up. I've got a long day of more work after this. We're recalling mixes. We're doing some guitar overdubs. We have to do a guitar overdub on, on a song almost immediately after this. Although I think we have to recall... Uh, um, 
the one with the Bee Gees uh, stuff, Eric. Um, okay, so the so the question is: Have you ever recorded in a room? Have you ever been in a band recording in a room? Have you ever recorded one all live together? Lots of yeses. Lots of lots of yeses. I mean, a little bit of information would be great. Um, that's great. Somebody says impossible. Oh, I mean, impossible in your situations. Yeah, but uh, you know. Well, ex tape was expensive, but it wasn't that expensive in the mid '90s. It got expensive as people weren't buying as much, so they had to crank up the price. There was a point where it was about one hundred and twenty dollars a roll, and now I believe it's about three hundred. But that's called supply and demand. Wow, lots of great answers. And please don't forget to hit that like button, all four hundred of you. That'd be amazing if you could hit that like button. I see we have 285 likes, so please, please, please hit that like button. That would be absolutely amazing. That would be super duper, as they say. Um, okay, let's do some work on the vocal, and then we'll do one more giveaway. And the uh, last giveaway will also be for a one-hour Skype call. So we're getting pretty generous today. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> okay, I'm going to listen to the vocal. I start on six, landed York and Maine. Something in the air got me on the cusp of sane. But whatever you heard, it's only hate I abhor. Love still lives here just down a couple doors. No one who mess with me now. Okay, so uh, I love that. It's super quiet at the moment. I'm sorry. Um, let's do a couple of things. Um, I'm just going to go and grab. Hmm, I've got a few choices. I think I'm going to grab the the SSL. Uh, 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 um, the 4000 E here. I start on six, landed York and Maine. I'm doing some high passing just for the heck of it, just for any low rumble. Um, I'm also going to go in and do a little compression. I start on six, landed York and Maine. Something in the air got me on the car. Oh, that really made a difference. Listen where that compression comes in there. I start on six, landed York and Maine. Something in the air got me. The air uh, sounded great. So with that in mind, I'm going to get a little 250-300 and boost it. I start on six. Landed York and Maine. Something in the air got me home. Oh, I love what it did there. Even a little bit more. Get a little aggressive on that boost. I start on six. Landed York and Maine. Something in the air got me on the cusp of sane. But whatever you heard, it's only hate I abhor. Love still lives here just down a couple doors. No one who mess with me now. Now, he doesn't really have much of a DSing issue, but just for the heck of it, I put a DSer on first. And I'm not going to go anything fancy. I'm just going to grab um, I, the Waves one here. The Twisted Hang of Vine. Maybe just there. The Twisted Hang of Vine. And Great. All right, so little DSing, little BX console. I start on six, landed York and Maine. Something in the air got me on the cut. I already like it, and it's barely, uh, we're barely doing anything. I mean, it's really kind of the, for this song, that's really been our, our, our motto. I start on six, landed York and Maine. Something in the air got me on the cusp of sane. Whatever you heard, it's only hate I abhor. Love still lives here, just down a couple doors. No one who mess with me now. The twisted hang on fine and polished gangster leaves. Your busted too. Believe what you want, but she's been down here for weeks. She's got two gold caps on her back where wings had been. No one will mess with her now. Sooner or later, you must choose which side you're on. 
I'm really digging it. I want to listen to the uh, original Neve mix. I start on sixth, land at York and Maine. Something in the air got me on the. I'll go back to ours. I start on sixth, land at York and Maine. I actually like ours more. Uh, the vocal is not as bright in ours yet, but I kind of like the body in it. There's more. So this is interesting. You see, um, you know, that's a Neve we were comparing that to, a Neve mix, and this is in the box. A lot later version of Pro Tools. This is the latest 2019, 18, whatever it is. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it. I love, loved the Neve. It was one of the best consoles I've ever owned in my life. Um, gorgeous. But, you know, we, we've applied the same philosophies. We're doing less. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a reverb on, and we're also going to put a delay on. Um, in fact, we might do two delays. So let's create another one here. And we'll call this one um, slap. Like this. So this is going to be the slap delay. We'll start with that. So why don't we have some fun and see what we've got. We've got a lot of choices probably. Uh, the tail ray is really fun. H delay, Echo Boy, of course, is wonderful. Um, TR5 tape echo. Let's have a look at this. Oh, yeah, this is great. This is really good. So this is the T-Rex one. Okay, so we're going to send, um, and we're going to send from the same one. So we're going to make all, all three of these delays and reverbs come in on the same input for the time being. Because we're not, we're not going to go too crazy with the effects because this is a performance-based thing. But, you know, we could. Okay, so. Pretty, pretty insane. <laughs> uh, 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 we were getting some... I so we're getting some phase where Landed York and Maine. Something in the air got me on the cusp. Landed York and Maine. Something in the air got me on the cusp. I like that. I like it. But I don't know if I like it as much as this. For what I want. Okay, set this mix to her. Land in York and Maine. Okay, great. Okay, so what we're going to do here is... Land in York and Maine. Something in the air. I'm going to low pass it, get rid of some of the high end. Land in York and Maine. Something in the air got me on the cusp of saying. But whatever you heard, it's only hate I abhor. Love still lives here just down a couple doors. No one who mess with me now. Landed York and Maine. Something in the air got me on the cusp of saying. But whatever you heard, it's only hate I abhor. Love still lives here just down a couple doors. No one who mess with me now. So I'm narrowing this. I don't want it to be quite so wide. Landed York and Maine. Yeah, I love this plastic plugin. So um, delay characteristic, warm, bright, clean, bright and dirty, warm tape. Let's go with that. I start on six. Landed York and Maine. Something in the air got me on the cusp of sand. Whatever you heard, it's only hate I afford. Love still lives here just down a couple doors. No one home. I've got to go in and find that buzziness a little later. 
the bzzz, it's excessive on one track and I've got to figure out which one it is, but we'll deal with it. Just remember that's something that we're, I'm ignoring for the time being. Um, but let's have a look. I start on six, landed York and Maine. Something in the air got me on the cusp of fame. I don't want to duck the delay, the short delay. I want that to be there the whole time. I would duck a longer delay so it doesn't, um, but I like the slap to be right underneath. I start on six, landed York and Maine. Something in the air got me on the cusp of fame. Whatever you heard, it's only hate I abhor. Love still lives here, just down a couple doors. No one who mess with me now. I'm digging that already. Okay, so let's get let's get a let's get a verb. Hmm. I'm just gonna go D verb. What the heck not? This is comes free with Pro Tools. Um, I'm gonna go in a, one and a half seconds, and I'm gonna go and get a plate. I start on six, landed York and Maine. Just always works. The D verb plate, I don't know what they did. I know so many friends of mine that just use that. They go, you want a plate reverb? Just use the D verb. Sounds like a plate. If they got it right first time, it's a no brainer. I start on six, landed York. I mean, just really? How easy was that? I start on six, landed York and Maine. Something in the air. Me on the cusp of fame. Whatever you heard, it's only hate I abhor. Love still lives here, just down a couple doors. Yeah, in the academy, we do. We got quite a few things. In the academy, there is a uh, deal on the uh, all Mac DSP plugins. So um, you can always write to us if you're an academy member. Um, write to us, and we'll get. We'll see what the best price we can get for you on the on the Mac DSP plugins. I start on six. Landed York and Maine. Something in the air got me on the cusp of fame. Whatever you heard, it's only hate I abhor. Love still lives here, just down a couple doors. No one who mess with me now. Twisted hang on fine and polished gangster leaves. Your busted tooth, fairies on the scene. Believe what you want, but she's been down here for weeks. She's got two gold caps on her back where wings had been. No one will mess with her now. Yeah, we'll put this song up. Maybe we'll put this song up next month in the Academy. I start on six. We've, already, we've already got two mixes up this month. <laughs> I start on six, landed York and Maine. Something in the air got me on the cusp of fame. Whatever you heard, it's only hate I abhor. Love still lives here just down a couple doors. No one who mess with me now. The twisted hang on fine and polish gang. I'm just having too much fun. I'm really, really digging it. So look, um, you've just spent uh, one hour and forty minutes with me, and we mixed a song from scratch. Um, we've used, we had seventeen plugins. Now we've gone. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. We got 22 plugins. This plugins down here is for my vocal mic, so you can hear me speaking. So we have 22 plugins. We have done nothing to the master bus. And I think there could be some more detailed stuff done, and there's a buzz we've got to find on a mic on the on the drum kit. But regardless of that, I think we beat the Neve console mix. So here is our mix now. Sooner or later, you best choose which side you're on. And here's the Neve. Sooner or later, you best choose which side you're on. It's too pretty. It's too nice. Too sweet. I love the width of the console. 
but I love the dirt and yuckiness and the groove and everything of our mix, a mix that we just did. Listen to our the verse. Well, the police put eyes upon the telepole. Now let's listen to ours. Well, the police put eyes upon the telepole. And they look down on the world through tiny little holes. It's just more exciting. It's just a bit more wrong. It's not quite so perfected. And it's done in the box. So if I was um if I was gonna, you know, um if I was going to suggest um you know, ultimately, if somebody was to say to you which mix was Wix, they'd probably say this one here was the Neve mix. You know, they would say that the grit and the girth came from the analog equipment. I've had it so many times. There's been times when I've mixed art from tape and people have said to me it sounded digital and there's been time I've mixed from, mixed from um, you know, analog um, and they think it's digital and sometimes I've mixed from digital and they think it's analog. Everybody's an expert on everything. The reality is, is like, I'm not an expert. None of us are experts. We're just... Uh, um, we can get it. Eh, mixes isn't louder. Um, it's like fuller. Um, I will turn up, but you'll find that the vocal's sticking out more. Have a listen to the, uh, well, the police put eyes upon the telepole. Now listen to ours. Well, the police put eyes upon it's just a lot fuller. Um, there's a lot less sculpting going on. Um, there's a little bit more letting letting schnizzle pass. Well, the police put eyes upon I don't know what you're hearing, Fred. Here's the new mix. Well, the police put eyes upon the telepole. Here's the old mix. Well, the police put eyes upon the telepole. And they uh, they're pretty much the same in volume. Um, so what what you're hearing in the differences is like a less sculpting going on. Less, uh, yeah, we'll do the tracks next month, uh, Jay. So um, there's less sculpting going on on some of the low mids and there's less, you know, I did more work on the Neve and the snare is a little too subdued when you listen to it. Well, the police put eyes upon the telepole and they look down on the world through tiny little holes. Now listen to the new one, which has got like tons of low end kept in. Well, the police put eyes upon the telepole, and they Actually, the new one sounds a little quieter. Well, the police put eyes. So, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not a volume thing. But anyway, so, um, wow, fantastic. Um, we're going to do the last giveaway. Here is the last giveaway, and we're going to do a free um um, Skype call. We're going to do a free Skype call. This is a pretty massive, massive prize. It's an hour of my my life with you, and we're going to talk um, music and recording and mixing and career or whatever you want to talk to, um, to whatever you want to talk about. Okay, so um, please hit that. There's only 400 people like uh, watching, sorry. So please hit the like button. It'd be lovely before we get off to get that up to 400. So if you haven't already, for those of you watching, hit that like button. It lets new... Um, it lets YouTube tell people that we're online. And we're going to have these multi-tracks available for um, for the Academy next month for February. Um, we already have two sets of multi-tracks up for this month. Haven't mentioned it, Tom. I uh, haven't mentioned it, Sheila. Um, don't need to because they all... Yeah, anyway, so I um, hope you're all doing marvelously well. And the last question is, and this is for a year's membership to the Academy and a one-year... Uh, sorry, and a one-hour... Not a one-year, a one-hour Skype call. Hmm. What have we done? We covered, um, we covered, um, tape. We covered whether you've recorded either in a band live in a room or you've recorded a band live in a room. What else could be comparable for this? Oh, have you ever recorded a stand up bass? Ever recorded a contrabass, stand up bass, double bass, whatever you want to call it? Have you ever recorded one? Um, that would be fantastic to know. Have you ever recorded a stand up bass? Um, um, da, 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 da. oh, Peter, what, what, so we win an hour with Peter, he says. <laughs> um, yeah, that would be crazy. Um, have you ever recorded a stand up bass? 
Thank you for sharing on Twitter, Eddie. That's really great. Please hit that like button. Be great to get it over 400. I see you're up to 343. Keep doing it. Hit that like button. No, never recorded one. I have, but the pickup was through an amp. Okay. Um, uh, 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 dum dum dum. Hmm. Um, 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 um. I've done amp recorded through amps before. Um, not re- never recorded out, but I no upright basses, super fun. Haven't recorded a stand up bass in the future though. Definitely. Um, Tom, Ronnie, Rob, Greg. Phil, no, no, no. Yes, I have, says Martin. So what have you used? When you have recorded, you can say no and still be entered. Um, but the... Um, do, 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 uh, 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 um, no, not recorded one. Peace style pickup, I put on the strings. Wow. Fate with an acoustic guitar and a pitch, pitch shifter. That'd be interesting to hear. You know what? Somebody else did that. My old mentor, Ollie, did that. He would take an acoustic guitar and tune it down super low. And that was before he could pitch shift stuff, though, because he was doing it on a four track. Does fretless count? No, but it's still interesting to know. Uh, Clint, recording the bass player, just stood there, did not move. Any answer will do. This is all about, like, there's no wrong answer. This is all about, like, just getting to know and sharing stuff. How would you record it? Um... No, I'd record it with I'd record it with a large diaphragm microphone. Do 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 Alex, Eves, Clay, um, Alexi, Barrett, uh, Bank said I used a big condenser mic and a small condenser for the pick sound. That's nice. I usually end up with one mic and then split it up like you just saw me do. I find that that's more control for me. Um, just it helps with the phase issues. Um, ribbon says Adam, um, sounded really harsh. What sounded really harsh, Nicholas? Oh, with the U87. Um, Alexi, haven't recorded it. Darbles Ma, uh, ended up loads of birds tweeting in the background. That could be kind of nice. Uh, with the Zoom, best wishes from Russia. Uh, 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 uh hello in Russia. Uh, probably fed them after midnight. Mike's Ben. Nope, says Nathan. Um, split it how? Oh, just the way we did it here in the mix. So just by taking the one mic and then splitting it into low and high. That, that's what I that, that I can articulate with EQ without having to mess with the phase. That works really well for me. Here's our be- finished bass sound.
down on the world through tiny little holes. So say what you will, you've been seen here before, but we all got our... I suspect you won, Sheila, because you also said queen, 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 queen. And I think Matt has a sense of humour. So, <laughs> fantastic. Well, congratulations to all the winners. Um, thank you ever so much. We mixed the song in an hour and 40 minutes. We didn't do, I mean, there's other stuff to be done, but it's detailed stuff. We have to go in and find out where that buzz is. Luckily in DAWs, there's so many different tools for this stuff now. So that's absolutely wonderful. Um, had a great time. This is really, you can see how this works, that, I mixed the song originally on Neve console. It was tracked on an API. And you can see I'm mixing in a box with a pair of blue Lola headphones on. You know, it doesn't mean that I won't go back and listen to this and recall it, but this is the world we live in. If I can do it, you can do it. These multi-tracks will be available in February for Academy members. At the moment in the Academy, there's two sets of multi-tracks for this month. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun and you can really kind of do some stuff. We do live feedback Fridays. We won't be doing a live feedback Friday this Friday. Or will we? What time? What time are we? Um, what time do we have to be? Yeah, it will be super early in the morning because we're actually on the East Coast. Um, so um, we're going to do we have, that one's going to be filmed. However, there's going to be plenty of other live stuff. Um, Thank you ever so much, you all, you guys and girls, all rock. This is an amazing place. Thank you very, very much. Um, please hit that like button if you haven't already. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Um, that would be amazing. It'd be absolutely amazing for you to subscribe. Um, wow. I mean, it's, this is really wonderful when we do these. I, I, I get to like hang out. Um, and just like t talk of so in many incredible people. 354 people liked. So if you can get it over 400, that would be amazing. Thank you ever so much. If, you ha if you're not already a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button. It's a big deal. Um, it really, really helps us. Um, you all absolutely rock. Um, have a marvelous time recording and mixing. And we'll speak to you all again very, very, very soon. We're going to do some fun stuff this year. Um, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Adam, Peter, Country Music Outlaw, Andrea, um, Clint, Anita, Sheila, Devon, Claudius, Meep, Ben, Ronnie, Adam. Well, I'm glad you, I'm th glad you think my hair looks marvelous. Um, and uh, Antonio, Philip. Uh, Blue Wave, Dave, Reed, Mark, Adam, Sheila again, <laughs> twice, not hardly, Jay, Ron C, Lisa, um, Delvin, Sounds, Peter Samuelson, Abolo, Emmanuel, thank you, Martin, or Martine, um, Paul, um, um, Nita says subscribe, <laughs> uh, Darko, G Baxter, Devin, Panacea Studios, Tom, I mean, everybody, wow. Fred, Leopold, Francis, Bob, Adam, you all absolutely rock. This is wonderful. Um, it's going to be an amazing new year. We're doing a lot of great stuff. It's just going to get better and better and better because you are all freaking awesome. Have a marvelous time, and I'll speak to you all again very, very